Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and coach. You are on The Steady Coach. And today I'm going to provide you with an updated at-home version of the optokinetic head roll exercise for mal de debarkmont syndrome or MDDS. I first posted this protocol in 2021. It's received thousands and thousands of views and hundreds of comments from people who say that the protocol has helped them. And I wanted to provide an update based A, on new research and B, on many of the questions that I get in the comment section. A couple quick reminders here before we start. This is not medical advice. This is an educational video only. If you choose to follow any of the exercises in this video, you are doing so at your own risk and I strongly advise you to seek medical counsel before you start any kind of exercises. Now, Malda de Barkmont syndrome is a symptom-based diagnosis that doctors use to describe when someone has a constant sensation of motion, typically swaying or rocking, bobbing. Often this starts after someone's been exposed to passive motion, in particular being on a boat for a few days or longer, but it can also happen spontaneously. Scientists theorize that this happens because your brain is not integrating sensory information correctly. In other words, it's misunderstanding what sensory information means and essentially predicting movement when there isn't any. I talk a ton about brain predictions on my channel, and I also talk a lot about my approach to MDDS, which is not based on exercises, but rather a biopsychosocial approach in which we talk about some of the other factors that can keep brains stuck in this cycle of prediction errors. So if you are new to my channel, regardless of whether you decide to look at this exercise as something you might wanna do or not, I highly advise you to take a look at some of my other content. In my view, just doing this exercise is not holistic treatment for MDDS, but it is helpful for people who are dealing with these symptoms because it basically provides a physiologic control alt delete, like a reset of some of the reflexes that are involved in creating a sensation of movement. This exercise can be quite effective. Okay, so before we start, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need an app that shows optokinetic stripes, which look like this. And you're also going to need a metronome app set at 10 beats per minute, which is quite slow. I'll include in the video description some recommendations for apps. There are free ones through which you can do each thing separately, and there are some paid ones that integrate both the stripes and the metronome, if that's more convenient for you. You're going to want your optokinetic stripes to be set up to run fairly quickly at about 10 degrees per second, which is the speed demonstrated right here on this app. Okay, step two, we're going to decide what head maneuver or head movement you're going to use and what direction the stripes should move in. For the head maneuver or head movement, you need to determine if you are swaying side to side or rocking back and forth. Some of you may be experiencing both, so you're going to pick one to focus on. If you are swaying side to side, you're gonna be moving your head like this. You're gonna be nodding yes. And you're gonna be moving at about 20 degrees of movement, which isn't a ton. So you don't need to go all the way into the end range of your neck to do this exercise effectively. If you're rocking back and forth, you're going to be moving your head side to side. So ear to shoulder like this. To determine the direction of movement for the stripes, you need to decide what is the dominant direction of your movement. Although most people feel like they're moving in both directions, often you can tell that it seems to be stronger toward one side. And you're going to set the stripes to run in the opposite direction. So for example, if I feel like I'm being pulled to the right, I'm going to set the stripes to run so they're running toward my left side. If you need to reverse the direction of the stripes, you're just gonna flip your screen around like this. If you can't figure out a dominant direction, don't worry, just pick a side to start with. I know that can be tough, especially when you're rocking back and forth and don't feel a particular side. This exercise version is going to correct for that. Okay, 
So step three is the exercise. And this one gets quite a bit more complicated than the previous version. So one thing you might wanna think about if you haven't tried the previous version is taking a look at that video first. That might give you a sense of how you're going to be doing this exercise before you have to make decisions about how many minutes to add on and what direction to change and so on. Okay, so the way the exercise is actually done is very simple. You're going to get yourself into a comfortable seated position and you're gonna hold your screen as close as you can to your eyes without it being horribly uncomfortable. You really want as much of your visual field covered by the screen as possible. When they did this study in the lab, they had a full cylinder surrounding the person, 360 degrees. So you're going to want to replicate that as best you can by having your face and your eyes as close as you can to the stripes. When you do that, you're gonna have the stripes moving in the correct direction, reminding you that if you need to reverse the direction of the stripes, you're just gonna flip your screen around like this. And then you're going to start moving your head in time with the metronome while watching the stripes. And it's gonna look something like this. Screen in front of your face, and then slowly moving your head either side to side or forward and back. Each time the metronome beeps, your ear is going to be closest to your shoulder. So the end range of each motion is going to be at the beep of the metronome. Some tips here for you. A lot of people have asked me, what do I do with the stripes? Am I supposed to ignore them or watch them? The cue that I like to use is to imagine you're counting the stripes. You don't actually need to count the stripes. It doesn't matter how many stripes you see, but when people pretend they're counting the stripes, their eyes start to move in the natural jerky movement that we're trying to elicit in this exercise. And as I said before, keep in mind the movement doesn't have to be huge. It's about 20 degrees in either direction. Okay, so bear with me. This is where things get a bit more complicated based on the latest research. In the study, the way that the researchers changed the protocol was based on the success of the previous trial. In other words, if the exercise is successful, meaning it dramatically reduces your symptoms or you notice an improvement, it's going to change how you do the exercise versus someone who's not seeing an improvement. I'm gonna do my best to explain this in a very simple way. First, just giving you an example of what it would look like when things are improving and then I will show you the decision tree that will happen if things aren't improving. So for everyone, the first trial, the first exercise is gonna look the same. You're gonna have the screen up to your face. You're gonna be moving your head either side to side, forward and back to the metronome beat of 10 beats per minute. You're gonna do that for one minute. And then you're gonna take a little break and you're gonna say, did that improve my symptoms? If it did, what you're now going to do is keep that exact same movement, the exact same stripe direction, but you're gonna slow your head movement down by half. And you're gonna do this for about two to three minutes. So what that means when you slow the speed down by half is you can still leave the metronome on 10 beats per minute but you're going to be down at one beat and then center at the next beat and then down on the other beat and then back to center on the next beat. Then you're gonna take a break and then you're gonna reduce it by half again. So now each time that metronome sounds, you're gonna be either all the way down, halfway in between or back up to center, halfway down, all the way down, halfway up and back to center. So it's gonna feel really, really slow. And I'm demonstrating this with the side to side head movement, but it's gonna be the same if you're doing the nod yes as well, same exact principle. At the end of that third trial, what you're going to do is see if you feel the improvement persisting. If it is persisting, then congratulations, you're done with the exercise and you can come back and do it the following day. This exercise is done for five days, even when it's successful. When you come back the following day, you're going to go with exactly the same direction and head movements that worked. You're gonna do it those three trials that we just talked about. And then at the end, if you've seen the improvement, you're gonna stop for the day and come back the next day. Again, repeating for five days total. Okay, so now let's talk about 
what happens when you don't see an improvement. And this is just based on what the research suggests. There may be nuances that researchers and clinicians are using that may not be captured in how I'm describing it. So let's say at that first trial, when you did that first one minute exercise, you did not see an improvement. In that case, you will flip your screen around and you will try it to the opposite side for one minute. The head movements and the speed will all stay the same. If there's an improvement there, then great. You just jump back into that original protocol that I just described, in which you start lengthening the amount of time that you're doing it and moving your head slower and slower for each subsequent set of the exercise. If you don't see an improvement though, the authors had a few different things that they tried. First, they would try increasing the length of time. So instead of doing it for one minute, you could do it for two minutes. If that didn't work, the authors would speed up the stripes to see if they could stimulate the person a little bit more. That's another thing you can try. Again, anytime you're noticing success, you can use whatever has given you the success and jump into the protocol I described earlier for when it's working. Now let's just say you've tried all of these things and it's not working. The exercise is not producing an improvement. In this case, what the researchers did is of course give people breaks between these exercises if they needed them, but they would just keep going. Even if it wasn't successful, eventually they would just keep the stripes going. They would keep them doing the head movements for longer and longer lengths of time, giving people breaks whenever they needed them. And then when they reached the end of their 90 minute time slot, they would stop. So they weren't going continuously for 90 minutes. They were doing all these two and three and five minute chunks with five minute breaks until the 90 minute timer was up. This may not be feasible for you to do at home. So my thought about this is if someone wanted to try this and said, this is something I'm not gonna be able to do for 90 minutes, you might try the original version of the exercise, which again, I will post in the video description below. Whether you're successful or not successful with this exercise, you're going to repeat it for five days and you're gonna follow that same protocol that I described at the beginning, where if you're successful, you start slowing things down and doing it for longer. And if you're not successful, you try changing the direction of the stripes and you try speeding up the stripes as well or going for longer or all three. I hope this was helpful for everyone and I really hope some of you out there are able to take this information and use it in a way that provides you with some relief, reminding you that I think a holistic approach to MDDS is the one that helps the most people. So perhaps being able to do an exercise like this, but also working on the factors that might make your brain respond with alarm and keep prediction errors going, which again, I talk about everywhere else on my channel. That's the way that I've worked with people to recover from MDDS. And if you need some stories of success, I'm also going to post links to Joella and Ben's success stories in the video description below so you can hear what that holistic approach looks like. Thank you so much for tuning in. Questions and comments, please drop them below. Good luck, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.